guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. Guys, today's video is a little bit different. Normally, I'm either typing on the screen or I'm writing on the board. This time, I'm going to sit behind the screen and we together are going to be covering three different model answers. We're going to be looking at three answers which were actual students' work for a GCSE paper. These answers were published by AQA and they were also marked and graded by AQA. So they are actual model answers straight from the exam board. Now, why am I doing this, guys? In my previous video, I, I talked to you guys through how you answer paper two, question five. This video, I'm going to go through some model answers for paper, paper two, question five. Now, what you should see is this. Everything that I spoke about in the video, you should see that this is exactly what you need to get the best answer. Guys, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, guys, so if we look at the question, the question says, parents today are overprotective. They should let their children take part in adventurous, even risky activities to prepare them for later in life. Write an article for a broadsheet paper in which you argue for or against this statement. 24 marks are available for the content and 16 marks are available for your accuracy. Now, here's our question, guys. Down the side, you will see R1, 2, 3 to 7. So R1 to 7. These are responses. So response 1, response 2, response 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are work. These are sorry. These are answers that were completed by students who sat this particular paper. So these are answers, guys, of students who sat this paper. And on the right hand side over here, you will see what they were marked. What they were marked against. At the top, it says audience, tone, and purpose. This essentially means have they answered the question. So our audience is have they adapted their tone to match the audience of their writing. So for example, if I'm writing to the government, my writing is going to be super, super formal. Now, the second part is the purpose. What is the point of our writing? The point of our writing here is to argue for or against the above statement. And what are we writing? We are writing an article. Therefore, this piece of writing must sound like an article, not a speech, not a letter. Now, this is where we must focus on the vocabulary. So you must have a range of vocabulary, range of language devices, range of structured devices, long and short sentences and a range of punctuation and your spelling must be correct. Now, if you've seen my video on paper two, question five, which is a question that is on the board, you will see that I go over all of these in the planning of my writing because these are what we have to include. This, these top two essentially mean have you answered the question and then you make sure you do all of this in your writing. OK, now, guys, for the sake of this video, we will be reading three answers and they vary in grades and we will be going over them thinking about what we would give them. Now, just so you're aware, guys, for a 40 mark question, grade four is approximately 20 out of 40. Grade five is approximately 25 out of 40. Grade six is approximately 28, 29 out of 40. Grade seven is about 31, 32 out of 40. Grade eight is 35, 36. And grade nine is 38 and above. So those are the marks that we must be achieving to get that particular grade. Now, guys, to begin with, let's all have a look at response number one. So this is an answer that was written by an actual student who was sitting the GCSE that particular year. Now, this is what he wrote. My opinion on this, our parents should let their kids straight away, straight away, straight away. This particular student has failed when it comes to the first two bullet points. Why? He's writing as though he's writing like a blog. No, nobody really cares about his opinion. He is putting it into an article, but his writing style doesn't match the purpose. Let's carry on. Parents let the kids do what you want to do, because if not, they will do it anyway. And also this does make some people depressed and could do something stupid. I think that parents should let the kids want what they want. If children don't do what they want to do now, they will take more risk and do when they're a bit older. Sounds a little bit like Shakespeare. Now, has it got vocabulary? Nope. Has it got language devices? Not really. Has it got structural devices? 
Possibly, you can argue they've got a short paragraph at the end. Um, has they got long and short sentences? Nope, not that are effective. Has it got punctuation? Yes, it's got a question mark. Um, has it got correct spelling? No, it hasn't. Guys, this particular piece, if I was marking it, this particular piece would have to have failed. This, this student would no way near get above a grade four. You're probably looking at around a grade two because number one, they haven't hit the mark scheme. Number two, their content does not match the question. So they haven't even answered the question. And number three, I know people talk about quantity over quality or quality over quantity, but guys, they haven't written enough. How can you write that and expect to get a decent mark for question five? So guys, if I was marking it, probably about a grade two, what did they get in the exam? In the exam, guys, this particular student, they got eight out of 40. So guys, this particular student, guys, they got eight out of 40. They got four marks for their content and four marks for their accuracy. So eight out of 40 guys, they are looking at, yes guys, they are looking at approximately a high grade one, a low grade two. So guys, this is an example of what you should not do. Let's now look at, well, let's now look at two more. Let's move on to response number five. Let's look at response number five. Childhood, that was the heading of the article. Not bad, I like that. I remember back to when I was younger and all and all of the things that I used to get up to when I was at school. I remember making mud pies in the back garden with my sister or when we used to play outside in the street till bedtime. Those were the days, dot, 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 ellipsis. I feel that parents today are often too overprotective and that they need to loosen their reins a little bit so that their own children can live the kind of life that we used to lead when we were that age. Let's wind the clock back a few years, eight years old. You would play outside with absolute no cares in the world, exclamation mark. I'm going to pause there. You can carry on reading more if you want to, but I would pause there for now. Now, guys, if we are looking at this particular piece of work, I have one criticism of it from the very beginning. And this is the consistent and the constant use of the first person narrative. I, 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 the first person voice. Why is that? Because this is an article. And it sounds again as though this person is writing a blog. So when it comes to the audience and the purpose, have they answered the question? Sorry, have they hit those two? I would say no. However, they do do a decent amount of these. Let's start from vocabulary. Have they got ambitious vocabulary? No, they haven't. But have they got some good vocabulary? Yes, they do. So guys, this particular student, if I was marking their work for vocabulary, I would say they're probably sitting at a five, six, a grade five or a grade six. They wouldn't get above a six because their vocabulary isn't ambitious. However, they wouldn't get below a five because they've done more than just use basic words. You can see the word conquer. Then have they got language devices? Some. They've got some use of language devices. They've got an anecdote, which is a small personal story. They've got hyperboles, which is over exaggerating. However, guys, they do this really well. Their structure and their sentence forms are, and punctuation are used really, really effectively. Number one, guys, with the structure, just by looking at it, you can see they've got long paragraphs, they've got short paragraphs. They've got a flashback to when they were eight years old. So they've got a range of structural devices. They've even got long sentences and short sentences. And coupled with this, they've got a range of punctuation. They've got speech marks, they've got inverted commas, they've got ellipsis, they've got brackets. So this particular student, guys, even though they haven't done, where is it, guys? Even though they haven't done everything to the highest level, they've done a little bit of everything. And therefore, guys, for me, this is your typical middle range answer. Middle range meaning about a grade six. It's a middle range answer where it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Um, let's see what AQA gave this particular paper. Okay guys, so this particular student, they got 18 for their content and they got 12 for their language, so technical accuracy. Overall guys, they got a mark of 30 out of 40. 30 out of 40 would have given them a grade six, which is a mark that I agree with. Um, it is a decent mark. Okay, now that is the example guys of how you have to hit all of these different points. 
Finally guys, let's look at response number seven. To fall or fly. Every parent, hyperbole, has experienced an indescribable joy, good vocabulary, when they see their child for the first time and feelings of an uncontrollable, protective nature, hyperbole um, coupled by ambitious vocabulary, are difficult to suppress. As a parent, it's an undisputed duty, good language, to look after your child, semicolon, your kin, your flesh and blood, because their safety means everything in the world. You teach them how to cross a road, you teach them the ABCs, how to ask for help, what to do if they're lost and don't know where their mummy or daddy is. Here we have a list. It's an innate desire to protect and it only becomes more difficult to, more difficult in those formative adolescent years when it's expected for parents to let go. But nowadays, okay guys, that part, I don't like it. I think it's a little bit too informal, but because everything else is so good, I will let them have that. But nowadays, more than ever, it seems that parents have become more and more unwilling to allow their children to leave the nest. Here, guys, they speak about parenting as very, very positive. At the end of their paragraph, they speak about parents being very, very clingy. This is juxtaposition because the ending of the paragraph contrasts the beginning of the paragraph. So if we were marking this particular work, guys, straight away, this is a very good piece of work. This is a very, very good piece of work. Has it addressed the purpose? Yes, because it sounds like an article. Um, has it got ambitious vocabulary? Yes, I like the words indescribable, uncontrollable, suppress, innate. There are some very good uses of vocabulary in the first paragraph. Have they got a range of language devices? Yes, they do. They've got hyperbole, they've got emotive language, they've got juxtaposition. Have they got structural devices? Yes, guys, they've got a list. They've got a long sentence and they've got a short sentence. Have they got a range of punctuation? Yes, I can see semicolons, I can see commons, I can see full stops, I can see uh, colons. They have a range of punctuation. Their spelling is correct. Now, when we look at these kind of answers, the question you ask is, what's missing? What's missing? What's missing? What's missing? At the moment, guys, look, we are only reading the first paragraph. We're not going to read the whole thing because we'll be here for a very, very long time. But I would argue, guys, that this student hits all of these success criteria. They hit all of the mark scheme. So, guys, let's have a look at what AQA gave this particular student. All right, guys, this particular answer got 24 out of 24 for their content. And they got 16 out of 16 for their language giving them an overall mark of 40 out of 40 meaning it was a grade 9 answer now guys there you have it what is the difference between this answer and the other two answers it is simply the fact that they stuck to the mark scheme they did every single thing on this list to the best of their ability and that is exactly what you have to do in your exam all right, guys, so those are examples of some model answers. We saw a grade one, grade two, we saw a grade six, and we saw a grade nine. What is the main thing you must take away from this, guys? It's very simple. A child in year five and a child in year seven can write articles and can write speeches. But can they smash their exams? No, they can't. Because if you look at the grade nine answer, was it spectacular? No. But they did everything they needed to do for their exam. They had all the pieces to the jigsaw. They had ambitious vocabulary. They had structural devices. They had language devices. And they had a range of punctuation throughout their writing. Guys, those pieces are officially from AQA. They were marked and they were graded by examiners. By examiners. So do not think that the mark scheme can be ignored. When you are doing your work at school, when you are sitting your exams, Please stick to the mark scheme and make sure you have all those different elements in your writing. Okay, guys, I will end this video here. As always, thank you for your support. Do subscribe, do follow on TikTok and Instagram. Take care of yourselves, guys. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.